Tonight, the FBI takes down Silk Road 2, Aereo fires most of its staff, and how do you get Microsoft Office for free everywhere? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 210 for Thursday, November 6th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting snacks right to your door. Start snacking smarter with wholesome, delicious treats like Parmesan garlic pop pops. To get your complimentary NatureBox sampler, visit naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. International law enforcement agencies, which include the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, and Europol, have taken down the Silk Road 2 website and server and arrested the person alleged to be running it, Blake Benthall, who's 26 years old, in San Francisco. He was arrested today. Benthall is accused of running this new Silk Road under the name DEFCON, and he's been charged with narcotics trafficking and conspiracy charges related to money laundering, hacking, and trafficking fraudulent documents with Bitcoin-based sales of more than $8 million per month. Law enforcement officials found that he used Bitcoin exchanges to cash out $270,626 between in Silk Road 2's creation in November of last year and then October of this year. This news is on the heels of Irish police arresting two suspects in Dublin and seizing almost $25,000 worth of drugs in an operation called Onimus, which the FBI, a spokesperson from the FBI, says is connected to Bent Hall's arrest. Hmm. Well, here's some other not great news. Have viruses made their way onto mobile devices? Used to be mobile devices were somewhat safe, right? Silicon Valley security company Palo Alto Networks has disclosed a hacking tool hidden in some Apple apps with software hidden in downloads that claim to search Chinese app stores for computers. Now, once installed, when a user connects an iDevice to, say, a Mac then data is stolen. Palo Alto Networks found the malicious code in 467 apps on China's Mayadi app store for Mac computers and says the apps had been downloaded more than 356,000 times. Apple has since blocked these apps from its app store. Palo Alto Networks says that the software, which is calling Wire Lurker, appears to be the first publicly known malware that can infect an iPhone or an iPad like a virus would a computer. In a statement, sort of unhelpfully, Apple says... Only download software from trusted sources. Okay. In layoff news, Daily Deal service Living Social, which Amazon owns about a third of, is cutting a 20% chunk of its staff, about 400 employees. New CEO Gautam Thakkar tells Recode that the company's been trying to pursue too many things at the same time and needs to accelerate its move away from Daily Deals towards offers that run continuously. So it's changing strategy altogether. Living Social recorded a net loss of $32 million in its third quarter on $64 million in revenue. Thacker says that he's held talks with Amazon about altering the commercial arrangement between the two companies because Amazon has been ramping up its own local sales team and is now featuring more deals on its own uh, site that its own staff has sourced. Internet TV service Aereo has been offline since the Supreme Court ruled against it and in favor of the broadcasters back in June. We've talked about it quite a bit and is now laying off majority of its staff. A legal filing by the company says that it would be shutting down its business operations in Boston later this month, although it does have an office in New York where it's headquartered. Joining us to tell us what's going on is TechCrunch writer Anthony Ha. Hello, Anthony. Hey, how's it going? It's going very well. I know you're you're based in New York, uh, as as is Aereo. So Aereo's. Right. Uh, I'm right outside the Aereo office. Are right you? Now. Yes. We, out. Well, just Absolutely. go in there and see how everybody's <laughs> doing. Knock on the door. Well, what's going uh, on here? I mean, Aereo's based in New York. They're shutting down a Boston office. It's a you know quite a few layoffs. So it, they're downsizing, but but what's even left for the company? Right. I mean, I think def- I mean the the sort of glib but not entirely unfair reaction. I think would be. Wait, Aereo is still around. Um, but I think it is, as I understand it, basically, you know, after, you know, the number of court decisions, including the Supreme Court decision against them, they kind of said, all right, we're going to, like, figure out kind of what we do next. Um, but, you know, while while they're doing that, I think they've basically realized that, you know, they can't kind of just keep burning through cash. And so they've, they've laid off, you know, most of their staff, as I understand it. Are they still involved in legal battles? I mean, yeah, you know, getting shut down by the Supreme Court, which was, again, like I mentioned back in June, 
eh, it's, you know, that seems pretty final. So, you know, is there any hope for the company to, I don't know, re-strategize and emerge as some different kind of operation? I think, I mean, presumably that's what they're counting on, or, or maybe, I don't know, a sale of some sort of assets. But um, I think there have been some lingering, you know, uh, uh, court cases after that, because I, as I understand, you know, now we're starting to get into things that, I'm, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but my sense is that the Supreme Court case sort of decided, like, the overall kind of policy of, you know, basically what Aereo was doing was not going to fly, but there are, like, little details about what they can and can't do and what the implications of that ruling are that are kind of continuing. But I have to imagine that fundamentally... They're going to have to think of a new business or, you know, it's it's got to be radically different from what they were doing before. Whatever happened to Aereo, you know, Aereo at one point was saying, well, maybe, you know, it should be reclassified as a cable company and, and pay uh, for an arrangement to rebroadcast broadcast TV, which is basically what they were doing anyway through a loophole that didn't make them have to pay the broadcasters. Right. Whatever happened with that? It, it didn't seem like it was a great strategy because it negates their entire business model. But I suppose that's an option. Uh, I guess so. I mean, you know, I think that that uh, they basically, as as far as I know, they've basically gone completely dark since, um, you know, or, or almost completely dark since since the Supreme Court decision came down, and they were basically like, all right, we're going to figure it out. We can't talk about sort of what we're going to do yet, because I mean, certainly if you to t- if you take them at their word, I think they'd really counted on the Supreme Court coming down their way, and so when they hadn't, they really had to just be kind of like, all right, well. Uh, Got to figure something else out. Did you use Aereo? Were you an Aereo user? Uh, I I was not. Were you? No. Um. I, I. But you know, I've got an OTA antenna in, in my house, and so I I understand how nice that is to be able to get really yeah. nice crystal clear HD video. Um. And you know, the whole problem was is that well, they weren't actually antennas in people's houses. They were antennas that Aereo was storing, and right. you know, so that so it didn't work the same way. But I wonder what. <laughs> You know, what does it mean for this this business model in general? I mean, it's it sounds like it's just completely dead in the water. I mean, I know Aereo users, people that I knew, mostly in the New York area, actually, thought it was just absolutely wonderful. But if this can't continue, I mean, it's quite a precedent for any any other company who wants to do the same. Right. I mean, it, it seems like, I mean, you'd ha- again, it would have to be something, you know, fairly, maybe you can take little elements of the model, but it would have to be pretty uh, fundamentally, you know, different. It seemed like, I mean, again, this is it, it gets it's a complicated area because I, you know, I've tried to read articles about the Supreme Court decision multiple times, including <laughs> right before this call. And it's, you know, it really gets into the weeds of, you know, like, you know, the exact details of how they're recording and when it would play. And so, I mean, um, maybe someone can find a loophole there. But, you know, I, I expect, you know, there's also a good chance that that loophole could then be shut down in a subsequent court case. Anthony Ha writes for TechCrunch and comes on TN2. Uh, well, we ask him a lot and. Sometimes graces us with his presence. Thanks for being yeah, here, I'm Anthony. Feeling good. Thanks yeah. for inviting me. Yes, absolutely. And I hope that the AOL office in New York gets a little bit warmer for you. I know that you're. That's uh, when it gets too cold. Like I said, I'm going to go uh, break. I mean, uh, sneak into the area office. See what's going on. <laughs> Sounds good. You've got All room. Right, see you later. All yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we're being so mean to area employees. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Anthony. All, All right. right, coming up, Microsoft Office is more free than ever, and the Moto 360 is coming to you in metal if you want it. But first, let's thank NatureBox for sponsoring this episode of TN2. You know, a NatureBox, a bunch of NatureBox snacks, comes in an actual box. Right now, NatureBox is giving you a chance to get one of these trial boxes, complimentary, of the most popular snacks offered by NatureBox. You know, they have hundreds of them, and you're only going to pay $2 for shipping. That is incredible value. You, you know how, you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to give you a hard time for eating junk. You don't want that stuff. It doesn't, it's not good for your brain. It doesn't help you get productive when you're, you're in that sort of afternoon slump. You don't want to eat junk food. Do what we do at Twit. Eat wholesome snacks that come from NatureBox. NatureBox.com. You can, you can look through, like I said, hundreds of different kinds of really good snacks that don't make you feel bad about snacking because they're made from good ingredients that are good for you. No artificial flavors or colors or sweeteners. No trans fats. No high fructose corn syrup. Nothing like that in NatureBox snacks. You can also get NatureBox snacks without any sugar. Maybe you're, you're you, you know, you, you got to go gluten free. All of those options are available to, to you. So in the afternoon when you get hungry and you're feeling weak and you think, oh, there's some Halloween candy left, say no. Grab some cherry ganache granola from Nature Box or umami roasted knots or acai berry crunch. Hey, they're all very good. They're much better for you than other snack options out there. 
Start that trial today and get the complimentary sam sampler box at naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong, and start snacking smarter. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to Naturebox for the support of Tech News Tonight. Now I got to look at this Naturebox and now I'm hungry. On to a few more stories, though, before I get to snack that we're following today. If you would like Microsoft Office on your iPad or your iPhone or your Android device for free, okay, you got it. Starting today, you'll no longer need an Office 365 subscription to edit documents or store them in the cloud in Word and Excel and PowerPoint documents, which you can also now store in Dropbox, which is another partnership that Microsoft announced earlier this week. The company also released a new iPhone app today alongside a preview of Office for Android tablets, all with that Dropbox integration. An Office 365 subscription will still be required to edit documents that are stored on OneDrive for business or Dropbox for business. You know, the company still wants to make money here. Microsoft is also restricting certain chart element customization and track changes to paid customers and making those premium features. But still, Office for free. All right. Thanks, Microsoft. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that hackers behind a massive credit card breach at Home Depot, which was discovered over two months ago, got into the retailer's systems by using a username and a password that they'd stolen from a vendor. This is according to people familiar with the investigation. This is also the same tactic used with other retail giant Target, where hackers got access through a contractor's electronic billing account and then accessed Target's payment terminals. That was back at the end of 2013, almost a year ago now. Home Depot also also says that the breach is worse than previously thought. Not only were 56 million credit card accounts compromised in the attack, but 53 million email addresses were exposed as well. Well, that's just great. Home Depot's systems reportedly contain a third-party vendor system that connects to the company's main computer network, which hackers exploited through a vulnerability in Microsoft Windows. Hmm. We really came full circle with Microsoft just now. New wearable alerts. Mark, uh, not Microsoft, Motorola has announced that its new Moto 360 watch is now available in either dark or light metal for $299. And a champagne finished version is coming soon for $329, just in time for holiday season. The company also announced that new accessory bands uh, and have partnered with brands like Dodo Case, which makes stitched leather bands, and TYLT, which makes silicone bands, to offer even more options. I guess it's good to be a wearable third party vendor these days. An update to the Moto Connect app will introduce a new My Design watch face that allows the owner to customize things like background images and overall style. And the company is also offering a new feature called Moto Body, which tracks your steps, distance, heart rate, and calories. It's all about fitness these days. Finally, Facebook has announced three initiatives today that it hopes will help fight the spread of the Ebola virus, a donate feature that will raise awareness and funds for aid organizations, health education, the company is collaborating with UNICEF to show information on Ebola symptoms and treatment to people in targeted regions on Facebook, and emergency voice and data services, which keeps communications open for medical and aid workers in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone by donating 100 mobile satellite communication terminals. Facebook says all of the money raised will go directly to the charities working to fight Ebola and encourages users to visit facebook.com slash fight Ebola to learn more. You know, Mark Zuckerberg did his uh, sort of Facebook AMA today as well. I'm going to read that after the show. That is it, though, for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to us at twit.tv slash TN2. Please do if you're enjoying the show. we got audio and video options. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live if you so desire or can at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. That's tomorrow and every weekday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.